Then the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Here ends the scripture reading. Thanks be to God. I don't know whether Jesus was actually angry when he read or he said this to his disciples or whether I am putting some anger into this reading. I'm a little bit confused, but I think these words have some real sharp edges. Do they not? The words that I want to focus this morning and I want to share with you are found in the verse 35. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross. Now these are hard, difficult sayings. Would you not agree? Yeah? Take up your cross, deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. By our human nature, I think, to some degree, I mean, we all go through this, uh, we're very selfish people, right? Are we not? I know there are a lot of moments when I'm very selfish. And, <clears throat> and there are those who, uh, um, um, who believe and are persuaded that uh, the universe revolves around them. And when you hang with those crowd or people, individuals who has a, a quite a center of the universe, it's hard to be around for a long time, <laughs> right? You get drained, energy drained. But that seems to be our human condition. We are like individuals with this sense of entitlement, perhaps, or sense of this universe revolving around, and everything has this me, me, me. And we even call and have a category called the me generation. We are so self-ish. I think there's a difference between self-care and self-awareness and being self-ish. It's like a black hole, right? It just sucks in, right? It is the human condition. I've heard this wonderful humorous story about a, um, to describe our condition, it's like this. Um, there's a five passenger seat airplane and the pilot, came out of his cockpit with his parachute on his back. And he said, folks, I have a good news and a bad news for you. The bad news is that the engine is malfunctioning and the plane's going to hit the ground soon. That's the bad news. The good news is that there is a parachute in the back. There are parachutes for you. There are five of you, but there are four parachutes. Thank you for flying with us. We hope that you'll reach your destination safely, and please fly with us again. Adios. And quickly, a woman got up, a middle-aged woman got up and said, I'm sorry, and took the one of the um, parachute pack and placed it on her back and said, I am a renowned brain surgeon, and I have a hospital in New York City, and I need to get there because I got hundreds of patients waiting for me. They depend on me. I got to save lives. So, sayonara. Take off. And another middle-aged man got up and grabbed one of the parachutes and put it in his back, and he said, oh, you know, I am a partner at a large, prestigious law firm, and, and I have a lot of clients. If I'm not there at the office tomorrow, that place is going to just fall apart. And I need to be there. So, so, bye-bye. Took off. And another older gentleman got up and said, I am one of the smartest men in the world. My IQ is so high, it's so embarrassing, I can't even share with you because it's so high. And I am the most intelligent person. And our humanity, our, our world needs me, an intelligent person like me. And so grab one of the bags, put his parachute, and there were only two left, a teenage boy and a pastor. And the pastor looked at the teenage boy and said, you know, you're young, you have a whole life ahead of you. Why don't you take the last remaining parachute bag and just go? I'll be fine. And the little boy looked at him and said, thank you, pastor. But I want you to know that we have a two parachute right now. 
the smartest man in the world just took my knapsack. <laughs> we get very, very clingy when we are selfish. I want to live. Me, 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 me. Right? And we are all up in the air, in mid-air in our lives. I would describe it biblically as being in the wilderness. We're in the wilderness. And when you are stripped away and you become so utterly vulnerable, you want to just hold on to something. And the words that Jesus wants us to hang on to this morning is those who seek life will lose it, but those who lose life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it or find it. So, my sermon title is Finding and Losing, or is it Losing and Finding? Losing and Finding. That is our human condition. The truth of the matter is that we are, in the words of Thomas Merton, no, I'm sorry, uh, um, Henry Nouwen. I sometimes get mixed up with these two spiritual giants because they distill the same truth. Henry Nouwen says in his book, The Spiritual Movement, and one of the first movement in the spiritual movement is from loneliness to solitude. I think when Jesus went to the wilderness, he was looking for a solitude. There's a difference between loneliness, being alone, and being in solitude. And this spiritual tension is there in those movements. Loneliness is a sense in which you are up in the air, in the midair. We are afraid to be alone. We distract ourselves with addictions. We distract ourselves with sensory simulations. We distract ourselves because it is hard to be in that place where you have to starkly look at yourself, who you are, where you've been, and where you are today. And sometimes we are afraid of our failures, of our success, whatever it is that we're afraid of. To say that One must deny oneself to follow and pick up the cross. Jesus does not mean, then, to deny yourself does not mean to deprive yourself. Right? Because if you deprive yourself, you got nothing to give. What it does mean is for you to be in that place of solitude. Knowing that at the end of the day, when all the chips are down in your life, ultimately the worth and the value of your life is not determined or defined by what you possess or what you cling to in life. Because there's nothing worse and destructive than can be to seeking out, to cling, you know, especially in relationships, you want to cling your mind. <laughs> That's destructive, isn't it? Yeah. But it's in those places of solitude knowing that your worth and the value of who you are as a human being is held by God and God alone. Because you see, when we were created, the life that the scripture speaks of in this particular text, the Greek word is psyche, meaning it is the very life force that gives form to your inner being. Or in Hebrew word, nepesh, which is when in the Genesis chapter, when God created human beings and breathed into the nostril Adam, the breath of life, and created this living being, Nepesh, life. It does not belong to us. So there's nothing we could add or subtract to make our life more meaningful or less meaningful, but it is ultimately held by God. To be in solitude in our wilderness, knowing that we're stripped away and not defined by all the things that the world may say we are or who we think we are, but that we are, in essence, held by God, created by God, ordered by God, perfected by God. It is that place that Jesus, I believe, wants to take us. The parachute, the truth that Jesus wants us to hold on to is the idea that one who go seeks life Seeking life, to add, to subtract what you already have, will lose it. You miss the point. But when you lose it, when you lose it, 
Lose what? When you lose those ego bound additions, superficialities, simulations, failure, success, measures, mints. You know, we always measure ourselves, right? Oh, that person, ooh, he's got a fat wallet. Nah, poor man. When you lose it, church, when you lose it, remember the words of Jesus? Destroy this temple, and in three days I will rise. When you lose it, for my sake and for the gospel, what is the gospel? The good news of God's love that you are held by the love of God. When you lose it, then you will find it. This is the way of the cross. This is the truth that we are to discover. Along this journey, it's not an easy thing. I could, it's easy to be said than actually to practice. It is, isn't it? Because I love distractions in life. I welcome it. I welcome temptations all the time, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, one day, we will breathe our last. Yet, no matter how our lives comes to an end, because of this nefesh, this psyche, the spirit of God in us, even in our graves, we're able to shout. Even in our graves, we're able to shout. Oh, that was weak. <laughs> and even in our graves, we are able to shout. That was just a little hint for the Easter we're coming to participate soon. And along this journey, we need help. We need help. We need to be fed. We need to be fed. I'm a child of God, deserving of love and respect. It does not mean you be depriving yourself or denying yourself of deprivation and not eating, right? It does mean that you are a child of God, that we can stand alone because you're held by the love of God. I'm a child of God, deserving of all respect and love. And God will use me to transform and to affect the world, to change the world. I'm a child of God. It means the way of the cross is that to recognize the truth of who you are in relation to God and in relation to yourself. And to know that you are able and given the capacity to make changes and transform. To go beyond your own hurt, to go beyond your own brokenness, and to follow Christ. And to follow Christ to heal and to reconcile and bring peace and create hope in our world. That is the way of the cross. So, um, there are parishes for all of us. There are parishes for all of us. May God's peace and then may God's love be with each and every one of us during this journey, during the Lent. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your love, for your grace. You know where we are in our lives and we find ourselves in the wilderness and we are so driven by restlessness and loneliness. We seek answers from around us, from people, from attachments, from possessions, from stimulations, from whatever those things are. But during this Lenten, we intentionally place ourselves in that place where we open our hearts and our minds to be touched by your spirit, to once again to look deeply within our soul. That at the end of the day, no matter where we are or however our lives end, we are held by your love. That the worth of our lives are defined by you. And you love us. And you call us by name. And it is in your arms, in your embrace, we find our real solitude and peace. Give us the bread for the journey that we may follow the path and the way of the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.